Today, we're gonna learn about something really cool called Git. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds. In fact, it's like a magical helper that makes working on projects with your friends super easy. Imagine you and your friends are working on a big school project together. You're all drawing different parts of a giant poster. But uh oh, you all live far away from each other, and it's hard to share your drawings and keep track of who's doing what. That's where Git comes in. Git is like a magical helper that keeps track of all your drawings and makes sure everyone knows what's going on. It's like having a super smart robot friend who's really good at organizing things. So, how does Git work? Well, it's pretty simple. First, you create a special folder called a repository. That's where all your drawings will be stored. Then, you and your friends can each make your own copies of the repositories to work on your drawings. Let's see Timmy here have a son, and now he's finished adding grass to his painting. When you're done with your part of the drawing, you can commit your changes. That's like telling Git, hey, I'm done with this part, and I want to save it. Git will then remember what you did and keep track of it. It will take a snapshot or picture of your drawing, saving that version in that point of time. Now, it's time to share your changes with your friends. You can push your changes to the main repository, and Git will make sure your friends can see what you did. They can also pull in your changes into their own copies and continue working on the project. Now, let's learn about some more cool Git tricks. Have you ever made a mistake in your drawing and wish you could go back in time to fix it? Well, with Git, you can. It's called Git Reset. Imagine you accidentally added a wrong part to the painting. Oops. To fix it, you can use Git Reset to go back to a previous version of your drawing before the mistake happened. It's like having a time machine for your project. Sometimes, you might want to try out a new idea for your drawing without messing up the original version. That's where Git branches come to the rescue. Imagine you are drawing a beautiful playground. But you're not sure if you want to add a pond or a fountain. With Git branch, you can create two separate versions of your drawing, one with a pond and one with a fountain. You can then show both versions to your friends and decide which one you like best. It's like having a magical art studio where you can create and compare different versions of your masterpiece. So, in the real world, these snapshots are called commits, and you can create different commits throughout your project to save snapshots of your code in time. You can also branch off from your main branch into alternate branches to work on different features of your code. At the end, you can merge your feature branch back into the main branch to be integrated with the final product. Git is a magical tool to store and manage all your changes within your code base, whereas GitHub is the place where you store your code. You use Git to interact with GitHub. Coming back to the diagram, when you push your code, you push it to something called a remote repository, which is a GitHub repository. All your friends can then pull from that central remote repository. Now, let's look at some code examples to demonstrate what we have learned. Alright, so here I have an empty directory that I just created, right? So if I do ls, you can see that there's nothing inside the directory. And basically, to start using git, you must first come to git-scm, which stands for source control manager, slash downloads, and you can install git onto your operating system. If you have installed git and you do git-version, it should show you the correct version that you have installed git. And when you press git, it should show this kind of commands, so it shows that the available commands for git. So when you're in an empty directory, when you have not created any files yet, and you try to use a git uh, command, like let's say git status, it will say that this directory is not a git repository. That means this folder is not controlled by git. To make this folder controlled by git, we must do git init, which stands for git initialize. This will create an empty git repository, and basically what it does is it creates this .git folder, which is a hidden folder. So any folder, like this git for kids, right? If I have this .git folder, it represents that uh, git is actually controlling this directory. So with that git, uh, .git folder in, I can use the, my git commands like git status, and it's able to show me my branch and what kind of commits I have, and you know, uh, the, the status of my repository. So let's look at that example. Let's just create a new file called index.js, right? And for the first, I'm going to do console.log. I like the sun. So this is like the first part of our painting where we added the sun. We can do git status and it will show us the, the status of our repository. So let's look, take a look. When we run git status, it shows that we are on the main branch. We can show that there's no commits yet because we have not taken any snapshots. But down here, the interesting part, it says untrack files. Use git add file to include what will be committed. So git is able to detect that we created a new file. We created a new file and we changed it. That's why it asks us to say that, oh, we realize that you created a file, but git does not have control over it. So in order to let git have control over it, we can do git at index.js. This allows git to basically uh, have control over it. And you can now see that this icon changes to a green A. A that means appended, added, added to the index, right? So if you do git, git status, now you can see that, 
look, no comments yet. But it says that now Git knows that there's a file that's changed and it's asking us to commit. So changes to be committed is the creation of the new file index.js. So to actually do the commit, we do git commit dash m. This dash m flag allows us to add a message to the snapshot of our code. Then I can say added the sun. With that, it says that one file change, one insertion. And now you can see that this color thing, it went away. That means now there's no changes in the current folder since the last commit. So let's do git status again. And we can see that, oh look, we're on branch main and there's nothing to commit because we have already just committed that file. To look at all our commits, we can do git log. And this is this will show us a tree of what the commits that we have in this folder. So we can see that this is a commit and this is the commit ID. So this is a special identifier for each commit or each snapshot of our code we have made. It's able to show who made the commit, what, when it is the commit, and it shows us a commit message. Now, let's try adding a new line to it. Let's say console.log, I like the grass. So we have added grass to the painting. To check the git status, we do git status. So notice right, on this file here in VS Code, this is a special feature of VS Code, we can see that it's now marked with the M flag and it's yellow. This means it's modified. So git, if you come down here, it says that look, git notice there's a change because you added a line. And we can see here this green thing here, it says git local working changes. So git is able to detect that we have made a change. And if you run git status here, we can see that it says that we're still on a branch main, but then it says the changes that are not staged for commit, which is a modification to index.js. So in, add, in order to add this modification to the, co to the commit we are about to make, we have to use git add again. So we do git add index.js, or we can just do git add dot. So this dot represents the entire directory. So if you run git add dot, it will add all the changes in your folder into the next commit. So we do git add dot, and then we can do the actual commit. So git commit dash m, added the grass. And if I run this change, you can see that the M disappears because we have uh, no changes since the last snapshot, which we just made here, right? So if you do git log again, we can see that now we have two commits. The first commit here is about adding the sun. The second commit is adding the grass, right? But let's say we added a wrong commit. Let's say we say, uh, I added the car, right? But then we commit this. So we did do git add then git commit at the sun. But hey, we regret. It's like, oh, I don't want the sun. I don't want the car, right? I don't want the car. So what we can do is we do git log. And let's say we didn't want this commit. We want to revert back to the previous commit. Let's say we want to revert back to when we just added the grass without the sun. I'm going to copy the commit message, commit ID, right? And then I'm going to do git reset, dash dash heart. And I paste in the commit ID. So this will basically revert, reset, go back in time to this version of my code. If I run this, we can see that the sun disappeared. So now we are back at this ID where the comment was added the grass. So we're able to see the power of Git where we can stick snapshots of our code and we can revert it back in case. So let's look at how we might push a Git repository onto a GitHub repository. Because everything now is living on my, on my local machine. If I want to share my code with someone else, I have to upload, upload it to GitHub. I can share the GitHub link and they are able to pull from the GitHub link. So what I have to do is I come to your web browser, come to github.com slash new. After you have created a GitHub account, you can name it, uh, name the repository, whatever you want. I'm going to say git uh, for kids. So it was, this is the name I give my repo. I can make it either public or private. I can add a description, right? I'm going to do create repository. So after creating a repository, it gives you the instruction on how to push your repository to GitHub. So let's hear, let's look at this, right? So the first thing is git init, which we have done. Then we added and committed some changes, which we have done also. So this git branch dash m, it basically renames the branch. So we already renamed it to main, so we don't have to do this. But here's the important part. We need to run this command that basically links the GitHub repo to our local repo. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here. Enter. So now everything goes fine. And I can just copy this last command, which pushes my code to the repository. So I can see that index.js have two lines. It has pushed it. And if I come back to this uh, website and reload it, and you can see that my, my name is here and I can see the commits made. There's two commits. I am able to see the file here, which contains all the changes on my local machine. And with this link right here, I can share this repository to anyone that I want. So I can share with my friends. I can collaborate this code with my friends. 
So I hope that this has given you a basic introduction to what Git is and how you can get started with it.